In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate and automatically add chapters to your YouTube videos just like this, which is done by adding this text to your YouTube descriptions. We'll use Airtable to download a list of YouTube URLs. Then we'll use automation to pull down the transcript and time codes. We'll use Claude to analyze the transcript and to create the chapters. Then we'll format what comes out of Claude to produce the final output. And then we'll use the YouTube API to automatically update the description for us just like this. It's a time consuming process, so this saves you a lot of time. You'll actually do it and it makes your view viewers and the YouTube algorithm happy. First, let's go through the entire automation step by step so you know how it works. Then I will show you how to build out each of these from scratch, including the Airtable database so that you can install this automation into your business. Now, the way this automation works is pretty simple. First, we store our YouTube URLs in this simple Airtable database, just like this. We drop in the URL and then we extract the video ID. And once the process is finished, we do store the chapters here as well. And just for convenience, I added a link to open up those videos. So once we grab this, this will grab all the YouTube URLs and send it to this module. This module will download the transcripts and the time codes. And then we send that to Cloud so it can create the chapters with the time codes. And then we use this module to clean up and finalize the information from Cloud. And then we get the current description from the YouTube video. And then we simply update the YouTube description with the chapters that we formatted here. And then finally, if it was successful, we update the Airtable database with the chapters. So let's go ahead and run a test. I'm gonna jump over to my YouTube channel and I'm gonna grab a video that I haven't updated yet. Notice we don't have the chapters here at the bottom. I'm going to come here and copy the URL into Airtable. Once I do that, this column automatically extracts the ID and notice we don't have the chapters yet. Now this Airtable search is only going to pull in the videos that have not been processed. So I'll go ahead and run that now. Found that video that we just added, downloaded the transcript. Now Claude is processing the transcript and time codes. And I use this note here to format the data from here because Claude sometimes gets things wrong and I want to correct any mistakes here. After this code is complete, it is going to get the current description and then simply update the description with the chapters that we built here. And we know it was successful because I have a filter here that only continues and updates Airtable on a success. So if I look in the node here and we look at the output, we're gonna see the chapters that it generated. And if I jump back to the video we were updating and refresh this page, we now see that we have the chapters at the bottom. And if I load up this video, you can see that we have the chapters built into the video completely 100% automated. So now that you know how it works, let's go ahead and build it from scratch. But if you're interested in getting access to the blueprints that will allow you just to import the templates directly into make.com so that you have the entire automation with all of the prompts and the code ready to go, including to this Airtable template here. Make sure to check out the No Code Architects community. I provide access to all of those make.com blueprints and Airtable bases in my template library. And if you join now, you can lock in a lower monthly price for life and it does go up as the community grows. All right, so here I am. Let's go ahead and start building this out. I'm going to rename my scenario to YouTube chapter bot. And the first step is to search all of the rows in Airtable. So I'm going to add a Airtable search. And to continue, I obviously have to build out that Airtable base. So I'm going to jump over to Airtable and create a new base. I'm going to pick my workspace, start from scratch. And we just need a few columns here. But first, I'll rename this to YouTube chapter bot demo. Then I'm going to rename this here to YouTube URL. And then I'm going to change the field type to URL save. Then next up, I need to extract the video ID from the YouTube URL. So let's come to my list of videos and grab one that doesn't yet have chapters. I'm going to drop that URL right here, make this a bit larger. And then I'm going to come here and edit the field, edit field, video ID. And then I'm going to turn the long text into a formula right here. And then I'm just going to cut and paste what I had before in my demo. You can pause the video to grab this or grab it from my new community. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now you'll notice here that the video ID is being extracted from that URL. I'm going to go ahead and delete these two rows here. Next up, I'm going to modify this field to store the chapters when they're built. I'm going to convert this into a long text, save. And then I'm just going to make a button just to make it easier to click on that video down the line. I'm going to change this to open URL. Then I'm going to change this to button, scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to just change the style, change the label to open. And then for the URL formula, I'm going to use the YouTube URL, save. So now if I click on this, it should open up the YouTube video. There we go. So now we're done with Airtable. I'm going to jump back to make. I have to create a new connection to that base. I'm going to add a new connection type, OAuth. I'm going to rename this to YouTube chapter bot demo, save. I'll go ahead and expand this window. I'm going to add a base. I'm going to search for the YouTube chapter 
Spot Demo. I'm going to select that base. I'm going to go ahead and grant access. Now we have that new connection and we can proceed. I'm going to select the base, YouTube chapter about demo. And for the table, I'm going to go ahead and select table one. Now for the formula, I'm going to copy this in from my previous demo. It's looking for all of the rows where the chapter is empty. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I should be able to run this and it should find that row that we added. Let's open that up. Notice we have the YouTube URL and the video ID. We're good to go. We can continue on. Now for the next module, I'm going to use O Code Kit. This is a really cool platform that allows you to run code in your make automations. In this case, I'm going to run some Python code right here. You will need to create an account and a connection. They do have a free account, but it's also not that expensive to upgrade. And it's really worth it. Learning how to run code in your automations is very powerful. I'm going to cut and paste the code into this box here. I'll expand it a bit so that you're able to copy it. And then we do need to replace this broken link here from the video ID that we got from step number one. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and then add this valid video ID. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Make sure you save your automation along the way. And now I'm going to go ahead and run it just to make sure everything's working. Got the row, ran the code. Let's look at the output. Let's look at the result. Notice what we're seeing here is an SRT file, which includes all of the captions for the videos and the start time for that caption and its duration. This is a file that is typically used to create captions for videos. So now we can continue on with the automation. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and connect up Claude. I used Claude for this step here instead of ChatGPT because it produced much better results for the chapters. Again, you'll need to create an account and connection for Claude. I'm gonna use their most recent model, Opus. For max tokens, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the max here. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a message. For role, I'm going to pick user. I'm going to add some content. The type will be text. Expand this a bit. And I'm going to cut and paste my prompt from my previous example. I'll expand this as much as I can. You can go ahead and pause the screen and copy this. Here's that first half and then the second half. And then at the end here, you do need to put in the result that we got from this step here. This is currently broken, so I'm going to delete that and then simply add in the new result that we got right here. What this is telling Claude to do is to create a JSON object, and I give it a bunch of requirements for that JSON so that it produces good results, some additional points. I give it some sample output, and then we actually give it the data that we got here. I'm going to go ahead and enable advanced settings. And for the system prompt, I'm going to cut and paste what I have for my example. This is telling Claude to only return a JSON JSON object not to include any other text or markdown in the response. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure everything's working. And while that's running, if you're finding this video valuable, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It tells me what type of content you want more of. All right, we are back in the automation. Looks like it was successful. Let's take a look at the response. We're going to look at this text response here. And now we have our chapters in a JSON format. It's an array that contains additional arrays. And we have the start time in seconds for each chapter and the actual chapter summary. So let's continue on with the automation. Next up, we're going to add another module for O Code Kit. In this case, we're going to clean up the data from Claude. This time, I'm going to run JavaScript code. And if you're wondering why in this one I used Python and this one I'm using JavaScript, it really just came down to that it was easier to find Python code for this step and it was easier to create JavaScript code for this step. So I'm going to run JavaScript code. Again, you'll select your connection. I'm going to copy and paste the code from my previous example. I'm going to go ahead and move this over and expand this window as best as possible. Here's the first section of the code here. You can pause the video and copy it. And then here is is the final section here. What this code does is it loops through the array from Claude and then it also converts those time codes that are in seconds to the format that we need for the chapters in YouTube, which is minute and seconds. We do need to replace this token here. It is broken from the cut and paste and we need to replace it from what came out from Claude. So I'll come right here and delete it and then simply come over to our output from Claude and add the text response. Make sure you add it right into this section here. You're gonna see some keywords here, trim and replace. If you're typing manually, if you just type trim and then open parenthesis, you're going to see that it's going to create that keyword that's in the gray there. Same with replace. So if you're typing it manually, that's how you'll do it. I'm going to delete that for my example here. Everything looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And let's go ahead and run the automation to see how it's working. Grab the URL, got the transcript, processing the transcript and time codes. And now we're going to format what we got from Claude. Let's see what the output looks like. Let's look at the result. And now you can see we have our chapters in the right format, minute and seconds. And again, when I use ChatGPT, I really just couldn't get quality output from the model. That's why I'm using Claude. And I'm doing the math in code. Remember, if I look at the output in Claude and we look here, 
we have the time in seconds, which is how the time codes work in a SRT file. If we look at the data here, we can see all of the time codes are in seconds. I found that ChatGPT and Claude were just not very good at converting those seconds into the format we need for YouTube. So I instead just do that in code here. Now to continue forward with the automation and access the YouTube API, we do need to create a project on the Google Cloud console to create some API keys and also to enable OAuth for our automation. You don't need to understand all the technical details, but just follow along and I'll help you set it up. Here you need to make sure you're using the Google account that has access to your YouTube channel and you need to create a new project. I already have a few here so I can select this and then I can go to new project. I'm going to go ahead and call this project my YouTube chapter bot and you can leave the organization and location just like that. It's going to create that project. Once the project is created, go ahead and select it. Once you're working inside that project, you're going to come over here. You're going to go to APIs and services. From here, you're going to want to enable APIs and services. Then here, you're going to type YouTube. You want to search for YouTube data API version three. Go ahead and click on that. Then you're going to want to enable that. From here, I'm going to come over to credentials. We'll eventually set up an OAuth client, but we're going to start with just the API keys here. So come up and create credentials. In this case, we're going to pick API key. You're going to take this API key and copy it. Then we're going to come back to our automation and we're going to add the next step. In this step, we are going to add an HTTP call. You can also use the search and type HTTP. We're going to make a request. I'm going to copy this from my previous demo. You can pause the video and copy it or get the blueprints from my community. Next, we need to fix this video ID right here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and then add in the video ID from step number one. And then here I do have to come back and copy this key one more time and add it in right here. You can leave the method as git, but you do need to change this setting here to parse response is yes. And then you can go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and save it one more time. And I'm going to go ahead and run the process to see if everything's working. We got the YouTube video. Now we've created the chapters. We're formatting it correctly. So I got an error here. It looks like that I messed up the URL here. And it looks like I forgot this ampersand, which broke the key so that it didn't think I had access. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and fix that. Then I'm going to go ahead and click run again. Now we have a status code 200. So we know it worked. And let's just take a look at the data. We come into the items here, keep expanding, content details. Let's look at the snippet. We can see the title and we can open up the description. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually update the description with the chapters in this step here. We need to create an OAuth connection. So you can go ahead and type OAuth here in the search, and then you're going to select this, make an OAuth 2.0 request. And now before we configure this, we need to set up something additional in our Google Cloud Console. So from here, I need to create an OAuth consent screen. After I do that, I need to create credentials but we'll go ahead and create the OAuth consent screen first. Once you click on this, it's going to ask you what type you're going to pick external. Go ahead and click create. Go ahead and pick an app name. In this case, I'm going to pick YouTube chapter bot. Then you're going to want to put in your user support email. It should let you select one. You don't have to put an app logo. You can leave these blank as well. For authorized domains, we need to add Intergramat. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that into this here. Make sure you type that exactly as it is or it won't work. And then for developer address, I'm going to go ahead and type in my existing email address. And then I'm going to go ahead and click save and continue. It's going to go to the next screen where we can add scopes. Here we're going to add or remove scopes. In the filter here, go ahead and type YouTube, hit enter. And we need to add YouTube and and force SSL. So go ahead and select this one and this one. Go ahead and scroll to the bottom and click update. Go ahead and click save and continue. You don't need to add any test users. You can go ahead and click save and continue. And then you're here on the summary. Just go ahead and scroll down and then click back to dashboard. And then you need to make sure to publish this app. And we are going to publish to production. You don't need to worry about verification in this step because we're just using it privately for ourselves. Go ahead and confirm. Next up, we need to go back to credentials and we're going to create credentials. This time we're going to create credentials for OAuth client ID. For application type, we are going to pick web application. You can go ahead and leave this name as it is. For authorized redirect URLs, we need to add a new one. Here you need to copy this into this section here. Make sure you spell it just as it is here. Then you can go ahead and click create. So now that you have these, we're going to come back and use them in just a bit. Go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to come back to our automation and add a new connection. Click add. You can go ahead and rename this. I'm going to name mine YouTube chapter bot demo. You can leave the flow type as authorized code. For the authorized URI, you want to go ahead and copy and paste this in here. You want to copy that just as it is exactly. Then for the token URI, you want to write this in here just as it is. You can pause the video or get access to that in my community. For the scope, you're going to add a new scope and you'll want to write this out exactly as it is. Now we need to add the client ID and client secrets. So come back to your cloud console, go ahead and go into your new OAuth web application, and then you can grab the client ID. Make sure you get the entire thing from end to end. As you copy that and paste that into this section here, make sure there's no spaces before or 
after. Then come back and copy the client secret. There's a copy button here. Go ahead and add that client secret here. And once you've made sure that you have everything here perfect, go ahead and click save. It's gonna request access to your Google account that has the YouTube channel. Make sure you pick the right channel. Now you're gonna get this warning because it is not a verified app. Go ahead and click advanced and then go ahead and pass through with this link here. Go to Intergramat. Then you can go ahead and click continue. And now we have our connection. So now all we have to do is finish this out. For the URL, you'll want to type this in or copy and paste it from my community. And then for the method, you're gonna to wanna to put put. For body type, you're gonna to wanna to add raw. For content type, you're going to pick JSON. And for the request content, you need to type this in exactly as I have it or cut and paste it from my community. And then you will need to change all of these values here to the values that we had in this previous step. So I'm gonna go through each of these and update them one by one and fix them. Here, we're getting the ID from this step here. And now I'm gonna remove these and fix them. Notice this is in data items. I'll remove that. I'm gonna to go to data items and there's our ID right there. Notice it's coming in blue now. So we know it's working. You'll want to copy this just as it is. Here, we're going to remove this. Notice this is in data items snippet title, remove data snippet title. So what we're doing here is we're just updating the title with the title that was already there. Now I'm going to update the description. So we have to get the description that we had before. And then we're going to add a couple of new lines and then add in the chapters from here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this data items snippet description. Then I'm going to add in two new lines to get those new lines. I'll erase them. Come up here to the A and then you can add the new line. I'm going to add two of them. That way when we add the chapters, it adds them with a blank line here instead of appending it to the end. Now I need to replace this with the data from this module here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that head back to the star, and then I'm gonna use the result from O code kit, add that here. Then we need to replace this with the category ID, and then we are done. Again, I'm gonna to go to data items, snippet, and then category ID, and that should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and move the parse response to yes, then I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Now I'm gonna come down here and save it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the entire automation from the beginning, grab the URL, grab the transcript and the time codes, format that into the chapters, do the final formatting, get the current description, and then update the description. I'm gonna open this up. Looks like we have status code 200, so we were successful. I'm gonna jump over to Airtable and open up the video that we were updating. And now notice we have the chapters at the bottom. If I edit the video, we can see them here. So we're good to go. The last thing we need to do is simply update Airtable with those chapters, and then we can call it a day. Go ahead and add a new node, Airtable, update record, choose a connection. You can grab the previous connection that you set up. In this case, it looks like because we're doing an update, we need to update those permissions. So we're just reauthorizing with with more permissions. YouTube chapter bot demo, grant access. Now we've got our connection. We just need to add the base. We can pick table number one. For the record ID, we're gonna use the record from step number one, ID. And then we're just gonna update the chapters to what we created in step number four from O code kit. And we can go ahead and click okay. And now we have the whole automation built out from end to end. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'm gonna go back to my channel. I'm gonna grab another video that doesn't have the chapters, get the share link. I'm gonna jump back to Airtable. I'm gonna add this in here. I'm going to put some chapters here. I'm going to grab these chapters from the video, just add these here so it doesn't run again. Now I'm going to come back to the automation. I'm going to go ahead and run it. It's going to find that new video. I'm going to download the transcripts, the time codes, process those into the chapters, format those, get the description, update the description, and then finally update Airtable. If I come back to Airtable, we're going to see those chapters here. And if I open up the video, we're going to see we have those chapters on our new video and we are good to go. And remember, if you want to get access to the make.com blueprint so you can just import these automations with all of the code already in here so you don't have to type it out manually. With access to Airtable, make sure to jump into my new community, the No Code Architects. You can access all of these template libraries and a lot more. And it just gives you direct access to all this to make it a lot easier. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I'll see you on the next one.